everyone! Thanks for stopping by today. I'm going to be making some journal covers out of file folders. I need four more for my project. So I thought instead of just making four, let's make a few more. That way I can do a little giveaway. So with that being said, if you have not already subscribed, please subscribe and do hit the notification bell and leave a little message at the bottom not just on this video but also on the next video i'm going to be doing a video showing the journals that i have completed and um, if you get hit that little notification bell you will know when that is up and just leave another little comment there and you will have a chance to win a journal cover they are going to be very similar to this not only a journal cover that you can actually make your own journal with, but I want to send some of my butcher paper with you with the topo maps. I like to sew the two of them together like this and then use it as my signature covers. Um, here's a little sample of that. I just have it messy stitched. Nothing's perfect. But I love, love, love the effects of them in my journals. And I just had them, like I said, as the cover of each signature. Well, if that is something that you guys would like to try to win, please just, like I said, subscribe, hit the bell, and leave a comment. All right, now that that is all taken care of, let's go ahead and make some of these covers. Now I might speed up through this process a little bit, but I'll just keep coming back in and tell you a little update. I am going to be making these journal covers out of file folders and I like to use the heavyweight file folder and I get this at staples. You can use any kind of file folder. If you have some at home, go ahead and use those because um, I always like to use the chipboard to make it even more sturdier. So I have them cut down. I am going to make it so it is 8 inches. Keep it so I use the same fold that they have here. And I am going to make that one, let's see, I think about five and a quarter. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing, I'm sorry. Let's see if I can shift this a little bit. I am only putting part of the file folder through here and bending it where that first little, the regular folding seam here and just measuring it up to five and a quarter. So I'm only cutting one side of it. Because I still need to do the spine. I'm going to grab my scoring board and I'm just going to score it right, or let's see, just want it so it's a nice size of spine. It looks like it's just a little bit, what is it, almost six and Three fourths. And then I will cut the other side the same. So that was five and a quarter. So I'll fold that new score line. 
and measure that at five and a quarter. Oops, make sure that's straight. And I'm just gonna cut that one side. And these scraps are great for tags, so hold on to those. All right, let's move this stuff out of the way. So this is going to be our base. I've rounded some of the corners on them. I think this one I'm going to leave plain. And I am going to be using the Tim Holtz tissue wrap. I like to put this for the base and then I will use pattern paper to go over it. That way it just gives it just another layered effect which I love. And I am going to be using a basic Art Basics matte gel. I use Mod Podge as well. So just use what you have that you like. And I already have it cut down to size and it's a little short on this side so I am going to make sure that's going to be on the back cover. Not that it's going to matter because I am going to be doing another layer of that pattern paper but it's just something I kind of think about ahead of time. Going to continue the process here. Let's see if I can scoot that in a little bit. See, I have already used some oh distress ink on this. That way there'd be a little bit of color. Shows through, but I am still gonna use some ink on top of it afterwards. But that's just another little thing that you can also do to add some layers. Now that I have the covers ready, dried, um, I'm going to go around and the extra paper here, I'm just gonna wrap around on the insides. And then I'm also gonna see if I have any little air bubbles like in here that I will cut open and add some more of my um, 
gel media to make sure it's all secure. So all I do is find where the bubble is and use my X-Acto knife and cut in there. And it's just where either I just didn't put enough there or it dried up and don't let that bother you. Just um, get a little knife and tear it back to where it is not sticking to your file folder and just add a little more gel medium and it's not going to mess it up but those air bubbles um, I just don't I don't like it um, it does bother me even though we are going to be doing another little layer it um, it's not appealing to the eye so I'm just gonna just use my finger and press that back where it needs to go. And like I said, we are going to be putting another layer in here of that pattern paper. But yeah, this one has quite a few little air bubbles. All right, now the fun part. I have over on the side some of the pattern paper that is already cut down to my size and I like to wrinkle this up really good and then instead of laying it up where you can read the words, I like to put it upside down and I try not to get any gel medium on the cover because I am going to be using dist Distress Stain and I find that if the gel medium is on there it just gives another off color. It's kind of nice to have a little contrast but um, the effect that I'm going to have um, I try to keep the gel medium, but of course it's on my fingers and it's going to happen, but it's not going to mess things up. So the printed side is on this side. I put it upside down. Also there's um, sometimes they'll say Vogue or my calls, and I like the fact that you can't read that clearly. It's just going to be just another layer, and um, you can just leave it like this. But the reason I don't is because there's so many journals out there already like this because Tim Holtz makes this beautiful tissue paper. Oh, I see. Look, it's kind of loose here. Um, beautiful tissue paper, and there's so many books um, out there like that, and I just want it to be a little more unique. And that is why I do these extra layers. Sometimes, instead of using pattern paper, I'll just use regular tissue paper that you would use for gift wrapping. And that's pretty as well. All right, we'll get started. All right, that's all of them so far. I'm gonna let those dry and then I'll show you what I do next. Stay tuned. So I checked and they are all dry now. And I also went around 
to make sure all the edges and the corners are really glued down nicely. And from here, what I like to do is, instead of cutting, I love to have uh, the torn edges. So I just basically place my thumb, and I hope you can see this, and just start tearing downwards. That way it's not going to lift up off of my journal cover. And it just leaves these kind of a fun little tears. They're loose edges. I don't know if you can see that. And I like that. So I'm just going to go around and do that with all of these. And I'll speed up the process. Those are all ready now and all these little imperfections that are in here is what's going to make your journal cover really unique and have some character and I love that. The next step I do is choose which ones I want to add color to whether I use the distra uh, Distress Stain um, liquids or the inks and I think with this one. I want to turn this one green, so I'm going to use the painted, uh, skills. Blah, 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 blah. excuse me, <laughs> peeled paint. And I just squeeze this on here. Oh, another reason why I like to use, I should mention this, uh, why I like to use the heavy duty file folders is that they do get a little warped just because of the moisture from the mat medium and then also with the stain and I just feel like the extra duty really holds its shape better and of course I'll reinforce this with some of my board so it'll straighten out but it's just another reason to pick that up. Isn't that kind of cool? It's really pretty. Alright so I was going to get this distress stain and run it over the entire journal. Love this stuff. It's that beautiful color. Alright, I think that one is good. I'll just set this aside so it can dry. On this one is the one I had used the stain on the file folder prior. And I think I kind of like that color, but all I'm going to do is maybe just use the... Uh, do I want gathered twigs? Or a vintage photo. I think I'll use this one. I like to go around the edges, make it really rich and dark. Also like to do the spine. Like I said, all the imperfections was going to add character to it. And I think I'm going to rub the 
this on the outside and hit all these nice little ridges from the pattern paper. fun. You can see why I like to make a lot of journal covers on top. It's a big process as you can see. But to have those ready and waiting for you, I wonder what do I want to do with this one? Um, I think... This is tea dye. I just really like how that pattern paper picks up this ink. adding that pattern paper on top of that Tim Holtz print, it really makes it so your journal is going to be unique. There's not going to be another journal like it out there, ever. <laughs> There's no way that you could even duplicate it. So that is why I like to do layers. That way your journals stand out and like I said, it's very unique. I'll let this dry and then I'll go over with um, the Distress ink afterwards. I want to make this one, I think the Age Mahogany. It's going to be really dark, but I think it's going to be pretty. Maybe I will try the rusty hinge. Oh, I love this one. Beautiful colors. Vintage photo. This one is probably one of my favorites. That's why it's almost out. I love this rich, deep color. And as a matter of fact, I think I'll make the next two the same color. Isn't that gorgeous? Mm, I love it. Pretty, pretty. Ooh, it's hard on my little grippers. Sometimes you gotta really squeeze on these bottles to get the ink flowing.
So the places where the ink didn't adhere is because I had gotten some of my mixed media on there, which is fine because like I said, all the imperfection is what makes it so unique and um, just extra cool, I think. All right, well, those are going to have to dry. Maybe this one's ready. I'm just gonna run my ink along the edges like I did the other one. And then from here, after I get them inked up the way I want, I take them over to the sewing machine and I do my messy stitching. And I do a couple different ones. And my uh, camera is not going to be able to go over there to show you what I do. But when I'm done, I can show you the stitching that I do want these to dry up a little bit before I do that. I'm going to grab the vintage photo and do the cover. And this is a vintage photo oxide, distress oxide. Kind of gives a little dusty look. It's kind of pretty. I like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. Alright, I will come right back. I'm going to let those dry a little bit. I'm going to ink them up and I'm going to run them through the sewing machine. Okay, I got that all done and they turned out beautiful. I am so excited about it. And all the little imperfections is what's going to make them unique and give them that charm. So I have different kinds of messy stitching going on here. This is that rusty hinge. Isn't that pretty? I love that color. Like I said, just rough edges and it looks kind of grungy, but you can do anything. Now that it's at this state, all I need to do is reinforce the spine with that um, reinforcement tape that I like to use with the strings. And I will use some chipboard for the cover. And I will design the front, either with a layout or with one of the brass plates. I'm not really sure. But they turned out really nice. I really pleased. And now you know why I like to make covers. I have to make a lot of covers at one time just because you're already getting the mess out and playing with it so you might as well make it worth your while. Alright, I guess that is it for now. And I guess I should just touch bases again if you would like to win a drawing with one of these covers, please leave a message at the bottom and also on the next video that I do. And um, I just really appreciate you stopping by and checking out to see what I'm up to. And um, I'm happy to hear from you. Oh, wait, I, I forgot. I don't know if any of you guys are on Instagram, but if you want to come over and find me, I am under collective underscore chickadee. Anywho, until next time, warmest of wishes. Bye.